How many of you like rainy days? Oh, you like rainy days. Um, <laughs> ask me why would I like to go on rainy days? Right, running. <laughs> um, I like running when it rains softly. Also, I like running when heavy. Uh, it's, it's so much fun. Um, if you don't understand, uh, you can approach me after presentation. I can explain why I enjoy running um, in rainy days. Um, let's pray and start. Heavenly Father, once again, we are very excited because you are going to reveal about signs of your coming this evening. Please bless us and help us to listen to you and accept your word and be transformed and be ready. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Searching for the stolen joy. I hope you have found some stolen joy last year. Uh, few days. And today we're going to find another stolen joy. And the topic for tonight is the second coming, and our commander is going to get us home. Okay, short review of yesterday. Um, as I said, Christianity is a leaf in the dark. We have a solid foundation in the Old Testament. And there are so many prop prophecies that talks about Christianity uh, in the history. And now the red Jesus was born more than 2,000 years ago. And just one day he claimed to be himself as a God who became a man. And how do we know he's a really God who became a man and our Messiah? And that's what I told you. Um, in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, there are prophecy about 70 weeks. It reveals who Jesus is, who is going to be Messiah, and not the Jesus, who claimed to be Messiah, conformed to the Messiah. So not only his um, the anointing as the Messiah, but also his death, a uh, year, and this time, and so many things about the life of Jesus was predicted uh, in the Old Testament, and all of them were fulfilled. So he's God, not a man. man. Someone asked, told me, oh, there's another option, fraud. Um, he's not fraud, right? So that's why um, the Christianity uh, actually began after his death and ascent, after his ascension to heaven. Right? Which means in his absence, he began to spread all over the world, and we are preaching here today in Winnipeg. This is um, awesome. And furthermore, he is the king of the coming kingdom. That's the most exciting part for me. So before he went to heaven, he said to his disciples, uh, let's read it together. Let not your heart to be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If one are so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Um, sounds like a prepared immigration, right? Dad or mom go to Canada first and, okay, when I prepare everything and don't worry, I prepare everything and come back to you and get you back to Winnipeg, right? Some of you know, I know some of my church members have that story and you know, that united in their way. Like Jesus was leaving disciples, disciples behind. And now he promised, don't worry, I will come back. So what's the purpose uh, of his return? Right, take his people back to you know, home, eternal home. Um, isn't it all about love, right? You want to get together and be together, you know, share everything together. 
Now, God is in mind. So He wants us to be with Him and be together. Um, I don't usually talk about movies, but it's a good uh, illustration and game if you, some of you have watched the movies. It's a Marvel's Avengers series and it's the last one. And game, the great enemy Thanos, was defeated eventually by Avengers without But I'm going to tell you that the real, real ending game is not by Avengers. But we are, this evening we are going to talk about real ending game that will affect every single person on this planet. So I'm not talking about another movie series, don't be confused. Okay, it's a real event will happen and that will affect everyone. That's what the book of Revelation is about. It starts with a uh, saying, Revelation 1, 7. Behold, he is coming with a cloud. Who is he? Jesus, the coming king. He is coming with a cloud and every eye will see him. That's how the book of Revelation begins. And how it ends, Revelation chapter 22, verse 20, he will testify to, the, to these things to say together, Surely I am coming quickly. Hmm. So this is how the book starts, how the book ends. Then surely this book talks about his coming. His coming. So now I'm wondering, what is Jesus' kingdom like that Jesus wants to take us there? And probably some of like, your children back in your country and when your father goes to Canada, what is Canada that father wants to go and take us to there, right? Then father or mother would explain about the good things um, in Canada. But Probably there are some good things about heaven, right? That's why when Jesus said, oh, I'm going to take you guys to my father's home, then something must be exciting, right? But if you say, uh, I'm going to take you somewhere, then if you know that place is not good, then you wouldn't be excited. So we must know heaven since we are going there. And Revelation 21 4, uh, says one part of heaven. Let's read it together. <coughs> Excuse me. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Sounds like a good place. Would you like to be there? Would you like to be any place like this? Uh, some like young people, non Christians, um, told me when I share this passage and said, Pastor, it sounds like a very boring place. <laughs> Nothing happens there. Um, they're saying it because they never knew what life, what, what life would be like when there is nothing like this. We also do not know. But for me, it sounds awesome. How about for yourself? Yeah? You know, that's what people are looking for. No matter where you have come from, we are all longing for a better world. And today is the election day, and you have better, you know, longing, longing for better Canada, right? But when we see candidates, then our hearts sinking. But we want to have a better world and better life. The world without sickness, without abusing, without financial difficulties, without death, the world with no war, terror, famine, no disasters. Sounds like perfect to me. 
Have ever used that expression? I've had enough. Yeah, I've had enough. You know, Jesus is coming again to end the things that I mentioned. All the violence, abuse, war, famine, disasters and diseases, and every kind of things, and death. And even Jesus has been saying that it's enough. It's enough. It's time to go and end everything. You know, over the past months, I officiated two funerals. Um, and every time when I attend or officiate funeral, a strong emotion arises in my heart. Do you know what it is? It must be ended. No more death. No more death. Every time when I go to a funeral, I have that feeling. It's enough. So if Jesus is coming and we are sure about that, then we want to know when he is coming. Like when teenager, like uh, children are home and parents are away, they really want to know what time parents are coming back. So they usually, they usually don't call, but that's the time they call. Hey, Daddy, where are you? Are you coming now? Uh, we, they are checking, you know, because they are doing something that parents do not want to see them. So they are checking the distance, what time parents will arrive. Um, how about Christians? Do you want to know the time of Jesus coming? Why, why do you want to know? Because you want to be ready, right? You want to have fun and at the same time you want to be ready. So that's why when you know real time, okay, until today I'm going to just have fun and after 12, hey, I must be ready for Jesus' second coming. That's why He didn't give us any day, any time. But He gave us signs of His coming. The one day Jesus was sitting on the Mount Olive with His disciples. And Jesus was talking to them the signs of his second coming. And there were four different categories, religion and politics, nature and society. So we are going to um, quickly view uh, those signs. Okay, Anna, I'll give you a chance to answer one question. You can find um, hidden wolf. Where, where is Wolf? Can you see? Hey, congratulations! When gift is arrived, Patrick, please make sure to get yeah, one or two. Yeah. Oh, it's hard to find. How did you find that? Awesome. So let's first talk about um, you know, world of religion. And Jesus predicted that there will be a lot of anti, you know, false Christ and false prophets before his return. In other words, like false spiritual ideologies and false spiritual philosophies. It sounds like what the Bible says, but somehow it's not really like what the Bible says. We're confusing. Everything is so confusing. Why is it more confusing? Because of the communication development. We can access every kind of information. The greatest evil is YouTube. Have you noticed that? There are all, 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 all the four spiritual philosophies are there. And you, you access without really knowing that uh, that's not true. So Matthew 24, verse 24 says, For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Who are the elect? I was waiting for you to say me. Yeah. You, right? Yeah. You know, books, magazines, and movies of the occult are selling in multi-millions every year. Hmm. There are, sorry, I do not have you know, um, statistics in Canada. Yes, so I'm going to use statistics in USA. 
Uh, there are 3,000 3, astrology columns in newspapers through the United States. How many? 3,000. 3, Can you imagine that? So, which means many people arise in the morning and oh, shine in the morning and what do they lift? They lift up newspaper. Let me see my fortune today. Right? That's the phenomenon. Instead of open the Bible and ask God to lead the day, they pick up the newspaper. Oh, let me see my fortune today. You know, there are mediums and psychics that are all over the world. Wherever you came from, you know what I'm talking about, right? A few years ago, there was a study about accuracy of psychics' predictions. So they chose like 250 specific published predictions. So now it's your time to guess. So how, how much percent was uh, reasonably fulfilled? Less than 10%, okay? So you have a good guess now. 3%. Wow, that's a lot, right? <laughs> and 97% that missed the mark completely. And when I was reading these statistics, I was thinking, hmm, I, I can do that. So if I predict like 100 things, probably at least 3 of them will be fulfilled. So if you want to try, try it. Okay, and see how many things you can predict for the near future or your friend's future and future of Canada, right? On the country, there are about people by people different, but 800 different uh, prophecies, a prediction in the Bible. And 90% uh, of them already fulfilled. How much percent? 90% of them fulfilled with 100% accuracy. Oh, did I say 100? Yeah. Very, very different, right? Psychic's prediction was how much percent? Only 3%. But Bible prediction is 100% accurate and 10% are still yet to be fulfilled. So it's just huge common sense. Then which one do you have to pick up in the morning? Fortune newspapers? Or the Bible? And which one do you pick up in the morning? Um, there's another hidden picture in the cup. What's that? Um, uh, so probably that, can you translate? <laughs> Are you with, okay, you can try. All right, you deserve other gifts. Okay, you deserve the gift. So Patrick, you should remember her too. You know, if you turn away from Jesus and the living mother Jesus and drinking from another fountain, spiritual, it is very dangerous and mislead you with deceptive spirituality. Watch out YouTube. You know, there's famous uh, psychic in Hollywood, his name is Na Lazarus. And do you know his waiting list for how many days, months? No, two years. He has two years of waiting list. Hmm. And for private consultation at $93 for an hour. Hmm. Two years waiting list. You don't have to worry. You can approach me anytime. I have no waiting list. But this guy has two years of waiting list. Hmm. The modern occult, Wiccan, Pagan, and Druid religion is now listed among the 10 largest organized religions in the country, the United States. Okay? Teens especially are attracted to the occult movement 
and outnumber all their converts by three to one. It's a growing religion. Okay, in the United States during the last decade, the number of people who identify themselves as belonging to the New Age movement increased how much percent? 247 percent. Do you know how much percent Christians increased? There's no answer because it decreased. So according to the website, uh, um, the cultic, cultic clinic.org, an estimated 5 to 7 million Americans have been involved in curse or cult-like groups. Hmm. Too much. Probably you know him, right? He looks like a Korean, no, he's a Japanese. <laughs> Um, like he's one of the famous cult leaders in the 20th century. Um, on March 20, 1995, members of Om Shri Ko, which means Supreme Truth, uh, founded by Ashihara, they attacked the public subway um, with, um, with, uh, with gas, serene gas, nervous sounding gas and killed uh, certain people and sickening thousands more. And probably he had that sentence. But his daughter was pleading not to give him that sentence. But I do not know the result. But if you are interested, you can go to Google and check it. And that's another sad story, Jim Jones. He ordered the hundreds of his followers to kill themselves as a revolutionary act. It's strange, people follow them. The place where we tell the truth, there are many empty seats. But the place where the false prophets and false doctrines are teaching, people are following. That's the, that's the end time sign. And prior to 9-11 attacks, uh, this tragedy marked the single largest loss of U.S. civilian lives in a non-natural disaster. Nine hundred people died on that day. Uh, it's too depressing, so I am not going to detail all those things, but there are many cult leaders and many people follow them and ended with death and so many um, unfortunates. So one thing is sure that it is pervading entire world. And this is a picture of just regular water. You know, some people live in that condition. But I put that picture to remind you the condition of this spiritual world. So so many people, so many people, they drink this kind of spiritual water. How can they be healthy and be ready for Jesus' second coming? Do you know her? Right? She's a famous woman. And once she said, I tried to empty myself and let the spirit of death inhabit me. Every morning before my sins, before my show, I lit candles and prayed every day. Pray every day to, I hopefully this end has ended to God, but to the ancestors. And, you know, some people would say that, that they, they really know the future. Have you ever met people like that? Someone, fortune tellers, have you ever met? Real? Actually, it's very interesting. Maybe it sounds interesting to you. Uh, I was able to tell the fortune. Not a fort I was not a fortune teller, but I studied some book how to tell the fortune. So when I was in like uh, 11th grade and 12th grade, uh, like New Year's Day, I studied it and um, I like predicted the year fortune for my family members. So they were waiting to listen to me. Are you interested? Okay. 
I don't receive money, so. Um, some people believe they are really telling the truth, but that's not really true. They know the past. Do you know how? They know the past. You don't know how they know it? Satan. The like famous psychics and fortune tellers, most of them they are Satan worshippers. They have a different form, even though they do not have the Bible, but different part of the world. I've met many Satan worshippers in different form. They know the past. So if you go to see her and see him and look at you saying, I told you not to buy that house. What? House? And that person like a, bought a house, but that's a, like their scheme and he lost like $200,000. And a lady come in and say, hmm, why did you follow him? She knows what happened to her last month. Then, if it were your case, would you be really, would you trust that person? Yeah? No? You will. You will. That's how many people are misled. So when someone approaches and tells you the old, you know, things that happened before, you will be, suddenly you, you will lose your mind and just um, uh, like a perfect, like a robot you just follow without thinking. That happens to many people. Um, also, some people would say that they perform some miracles. They do, but partially true. Revelation 16, 14, for the spirits uh, of demons performing signs because they are angels. They can do like supernatural things in the human's the view. Because they are somehow higher being, they can do more. They have less limited uh, physically than human beings. So they do perform miracles. But they have a purpose of doing miracles. Like God performs miracles to save people, right? I didn't have time to tell the whole story, but I've been in that environment for very many hours, many years. So I know what they do. They perform miracles to destroy their lives. They just meet as a gentle man and woman. But as time goes by, they will be changed and be harsh and dictate your life. Somehow they will get every penny from your pocket and eventually destroy your life. That's the purpose of the Satan performing miracles. And that's why Proverbs 14 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in the way of death. That's certainly true. You know, no matter how long have you been living in this life, we have different age group people. If you, if you reflect, you can, you can see that nothing in this world really quench your thirsty, your spiritual thirsty. John chapter 4, verse 13, 14 says, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. It's, now Jesus is talking to a Samaritan woman, but that's just water to drink. But you can figuratively, whatever we try to satisfy ourselves, things we buy, things we pursue, whatever things, you will thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that shall give him, I shall give him, will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him, <coughs> excuse me, will become in him a fountain of water, spring up into everlasting life. So instead of drinking continually from outside, the ones who we get the living water of Jesus Christ, it will be a fountain within our hearts. And it will generate joy, peace, love, 
eventually lead us to everlasting life. Amen? Signs of politics. Now let's look at signs of politics. Matthew 24, verse 6 7 says, And you hear the words and rumors of words, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. What am I talking about? There are no all these words in human history, right? But frequency of words and scale of words will be greater and have been greater than before. Just imagine like 200 years of when they fight. It was a real fight, right? So physically they have to meet together, right? But now, how do they fight? They sit on the desk and push the button. And the bomb, flying bird fly over and, and just bombing the nation. They fight without the finger and just one finger like a thousand people die right it can be ten thousand people so it cannot be compared like the words in the ancient times and Jesus predicted just before the end of time there would be international conflicts on a global scale the nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged. So nations will rise against Jesus and there will be international conflict. <clears throat> so Jesus will come when human has power to destroy the entire human race. Do we have that power? Yes, United States and Russia alone. The, with the atomic bombs and all the bombs they have, they can annihilate every single person in the world. Luke chapter 20 and verse 26, Men's hearts are failing from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. That's the end time message. But for you, you don't have to fear. Why? Because you know that these are the signs of hope. If we do not know this message, we'll be trembled when the world turns to like this. But when we know that these are the signs of Jesus coming, then we, our hearts should be rejoiced and wait for His soon coming. Nature. Matthew 24, verse 7, And there will be famines, pestilence, and also case in various places. Let's first talk about famines. United Nations report food shortage in 38 countries. One, the sixth population of the world is undernourished. Hmm. And 10,000 people per day and 3.5 million per year die of starvation. Can you imagine that? Because we are born in this part of the world and live in this part of the world. We do not know. But this is reality of today. And drought in the Horn, northeast of Africa in 2011. Do you know how many people died as a result of that? 10,000 people. Can you imagine? A uh, pestilence is strange disease that affects human beings, crops, and the environment. The, every year, there are more than 1 billion cases and over 1 million deaths from vector bone disease, which is pestilence. The, now, when the people was not moving fast like today, one area you know, plague finish, just stop there. But now if one area has, you know, contaminated with one kind of disease, and it's a matter of days and weeks to spread all over the world. It's scary. We already saw, do you remember SARS? No? Yeah. 
So warnings from scientists, no more than one or few decades remain. How many decades? One or a few decades remain before the chance of a, a bird, the new threats we now confront. We will lose and the prospects of humanity immeasurably diminished. Even scientists think that one decade or a few decades, if there's no dramatic change, not many years are left for the human being. So they are talking about pestilence, pollution, and many other man-made disasters. About earthquakes, there have been always earthquakes, but frequency and intensity has been greater. So 50 earthquakes a day, but nearly 20,000 a year. In a sense, the turn of the new millennium, it is estimated that there have been over 800,000 earthquakes. Wow! Now you are not surprised anymore? Too many numbers? 800,000 earthquakes. Luke 21 and 11 says there will be great earthquakes, and there will be epidemics and famines in various places, and there will be fearful signs of great signs from heaven. So Luke talks about not only any earthquakes, but great earthquakes. And what else did he say? Fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Have you ever seen them? Tornado, hurricanes. It's happening greater and greater hurricanes and making new record every year. That's, that's happening. Natural diseases are getting more vicious and fearful. Even this year, um, you know, it's a part of USA and Canada also experienced that one. I don't remember the name of the one, but the strong one. So there is no security at end of time. There's nowhere in security at end time. How stay you invest, invest your life income? You know, can be swept away overnight. I've seen many houses been destroyed with natural disasters. The job that you have trained for decades can be disappeared overnight. Nothing is secure. The whole nature has been groaning, I can tell. The whole nature is groaning and tell us that it is enough. Signs of society. Our social values, our, our social values have been falling apart. Have you experienced that? Have you seen around us? Moral decay, marriage is under attack. It's one of the greatest disasters for the human society. I think it's a greater threat than nuclear bombs. Broken families produce broken children, and broken children produce broken societies. The basic structure of the society has been greatly shaken. Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 to 39, But as the days of Noah were, well, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Hmm, what's the problem with that? Right? Eating and drinking, getting married. What's the problem with that? Um, the problem is that they not the healthy way of eating, drinking, and getting married. Not the natural way of getting married. He was talking about corrupt and immoral things in our family system and the societies. Now, um, last week I met one of the pastors in different denominations. He said that the, his church now is discussing about same-sex marriage. Whether they are going to allow or not. When they begin to discuss, we know the results, right? 
Genesis, Genesis 6, 11 to 12, the earth was, was corrupted before God and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. That's what's happening today, the world we are living. In 475,000 homicides deaths a year. And one in four children have been physically abused. One in three women have been victims of abuse. One in 17 older people have been abused in the past months. You know, when we see the gun shot and kill like 10 people, we are so shocked, right? But actually, many unknown stories, so many people end their lives. Even immoral richness and sudden economic disaster is talking about in the Bible. Verse 2, your riches are corrupt and your garments are moth eaten. And said, you have shipped up treasures in the last two days. And Revelation 1, 17 says, for um, in one hour such great riches, this is probably wrong reference that chapter 1. I'm sorry about that. For in one hour such great riches uh, came to nothing. So which means before Jesus comes, there will be the worldwide financial shocking. Now the economists have been predicting it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It has been several years, but it hasn't come yet. But before Jesus come again, there will be international, the financial disasters. You know, we get married, have kids, and work every day hard. Why? What's the reason for that? Because we want to bring happiness to our family, right? The young people, you go to work and study hard and go to work, study and work. Why do you do that? You do not know? I hope you know. Um, that's what people first, they want to be happy. But this word does not guarantee our future anymore. There's no more security and everything is uncertain. Oops. Okay, you went too, too far. Um, 2004, I don't know whether you remember, I was in uh, India. And I was uh, doing crusade like this in India 2004. And one day, our team was so exhausted, so we decided to take a morning off. So we were thinking to go to nearby village, and, but the organizer said it takes like one, more than one hour to go there. So it's better to go to like a, any near swimming pool to stay there for the morning. So I followed the, the advice, and so we went to there in the morning, and in the afternoon we came back and prepared there for the evening meeting. So evening meeting was very good, exciting, and we came home, not home, that's where we stayed. And we had a good sleep. The following day, um, one of the pastors showed me newspaper. Uh, this, scene, this newspaper doesn't have the scene, but we the uh, you know, dead bodies, tsunami attacked India, Indonesia, and some other countries, and killed thousands of thousands of people. Do you remember 2012? And we, I could be there with my team and swept away by a tsunami. And that night evening, I don't know anybody who died with the tsunami. Well, as I was sitting in the bus and going to the meeting place, I cried. 
cry. I cried, cried a lot, and I was praying to God, Lord, it must be stopped. No more death. No more crying. You know, as I repeatedly told you this evening, these signs are not source of fear and anxiety, but urge us to return to God and be ready for His second coming. Do you know what happened in AD 70? AD 70? Jerusalem was completely destroyed by the Roman Empire. But do you know that no single Christian died? Why? Because through Jesus Christ, signs were given of the destruction of Jerusalem. When they saw the sign, they left the city and no one died. And Jesus is coming again. And He showed us the signs of His coming. And now we are seeing His signs, signs of His coming. I hope no one will perish, no Christian will perish on the day of Jesus' second coming. Because we know, we have the signs so that we can be ready for His coming. You are not here today by accident. You think you plan to be here, right? But God has been working on you. And you responded to God's invitation. That's why you are here today. Is there anything in your life that hinders you to be ready for Jesus' second coming? Whatever it is, may the Holy Spirit urges you to give up and turn to God this evening. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I have got enough of this world. And I want you to take us to our eternal home. Please come into our lives and change us the way you want us to be. And lead every step of our lives so that eventually we can step in to your kingdom. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.